Now that we've dealt with nouns, verbs and verb agreement, we can start putting a few other little bits and pieces into our Latin sentences. First of all, for today, adverbs. An adverb is a word which describes either how or when a verb takes place. Here are a few examples. Bene, well, fortita, bravely, greatly, soon and often. They're describing how the verb happens or when it happens. Now, the positioning of adverbs is a little flexible. For the most part, they tend to come before the verb in a Latin sentence. But adverbs that are to do with time, words like diu for a long time, interdum sometimes, mox soon, they will sometimes come at the beginning of the sentence, before the subject. So even at this early stage, we're beginning to see that Latin word order is complicated. And for this reason, I have developed in Clark's Latin a method of analysing each word and annotating it to show what it is. So let's have a look at this first sentence here. We're going to begin by establishing where the subject is. Now, usually the subject is to be found at the beginning. It'll also have a nominative noun ending, a in the singular or ae in the plural. So, as we expect, the subject here is at the beginning and we're going to underline it. Copy I. The troops. They're the subject of the sentence, the person or thing carrying out the action. Next, we need to find the verb. We need to work out what it is that the troops are doing. The verb is almost always going to go at the end of the sentence. It will also have one of the OST mustis und endings. And yes, it's where we expect it to be pugnat. And we're going to put a box around it, like so. And that just leaves the word fortita, which is one of the adverbs we had a look at earlier. And adverbs are bracketed off with ordinary brackets. So I'm going to put brackets around fortita, like so. Now we can go about translating it. Copy I, the troops, pugnant, fight, and fortita, the adverb describing how they fight, bravely. So, the troops fight bravely. Likewise, number two. Start off with the subject, whoever. It's got a nominative singular ending, the girl. Now find the verb at the end, clamat. She is shouting. That's the action that she's carrying out. And magnopery, one of those adverbs, will put brackets around like so. The girl shouts greatly. Sounds a bit clunky in English, so perhaps the girl shouts a lot. The girl shouts a great deal. Something along those lines. The girl shouts a lot. But, number three, beware. The words won't always be where we expect them to. This time, my subject is here with the nominative ending, Agricola, the farmer. He's the one carrying out the action. He's not at the beginning, because mox is a time adverb. So beware, word order can be tricksy in Latin. Agricola, the farmer. Apropinquat is my verb. He is approaching. And then mox is describing when this approaching takes place soon. Soon the farmer approaches. Perhaps better in English, I think, to say the farmer soon approaches. There are often several different ways you can put a Latin sentence into English, and you get to decide which one sounds the most natural in English. Now, another element of a sentence is actually something we've already met, which is a conjunction. Conjunctions, we saw back in chapter 2, are joining words, like conjoined twins. Conjunction. Now, all the basic conjunctions that we've already seen, like et, and, said, but, out, or, etc., are what are called coordinating conjunctions. They're the ones that connect things together. These conjunctions here are subordinating conjunctions, and they introduce a subordinate clause. 
This may be something that you've come across already in English. A subordinate clause is a section of a sentence with a verb in it that provides a little bit of extra information. So take a sentence like, I threw the boy out of the window because he was so irritating. Because he was so irritating is giving me some extra information. The sentence would still function without it, and equally, we couldn't have that subclause by itself. We couldn't just say, because the boy was irritating, and then not say anything else. It wouldn't make any sense. So these subclauses contain a verb, and they're introduced by a subordinating conjunction. Ubi, when, introduces a temporal clause, a time clause. Quad, because, introduces a causal clause, tells us the cause of something, why it happened. And quam quam, although, introduces a concessive clause, it concedes something. Although something is the case, something else happens. Now, in our annotation, conjunctions are put in square brackets. Now, before we deal with these sentences in full, I just want to identify in each one where the subordinate clause is. Remember, it's going to begin with one of those subordinating conjunctions, and it will end, like any Latin phrase or sentence, with a verb. So, have a look at number four here. My subordinating conjunction is there, quad. So I'm going to put it in square brackets. I'm also going to put a slash there to split off this subordinate clause from this, the main clause, the most important part of the sentence. Now let's do the same thing in number five. My subordinating conjunction this time is here, ubi. Again, we'll put it in square brackets. And now we need a slash at the end of it. Don't forget, subclauses end with a verb. The next verb along, poeta, is a noun. Cantat is a verb. So that's where my slash is going to go. Subordinate clause here, main clause here. And finally, down in number six, my subordinating conjunction is there, quam quam, although. So it'll have a slash before it. And we need another slash at the end of this subclause here. In this question, the subclause has been sandwiched in the middle of the sentence, which is something Latin quite often likes to do. Now that we've done that, we can translate the rest of the clauses in exactly the same way as we've been doing before, and indeed apply the rules of annotation as we did before. So in question four here, filii are the subject of the main verb, while festinant is the verb, and femina is the subject within the subordinate clause, and vocat is the verb. So, the daughters hurry, or the daughters are hurrying. Quad, because. Femina, the woman. And vocat, calls is calling. The daughters hurry because the woman is calling. Likewise here in number five. Poeta is the subject of this subclause. Cantat is the verb. Put a box around it. And in the main clause, we've got the subject. And actually we've got two verbs here. Stant, the first one. Spectant, the second one and they're connected with a little coordinating conjunction, et. So, ubi, when, poeta, the poet, cantat, sings, inkali, new subject, the natives, stant, that's they stand, et, and spectant, watch. When the poet sings, the natives stand and watch. And finally, number six, I'm going to write the answer up here, if I may, so I don't have to crouch down. Now time, there's my subject of the main clause, and the rest of the main clause is here at the end. Known. Now, known isn't quite a conjunction or an adverb. It's a negative particle, so I'm not actually going to annotate it at all. But I am going to put a box around my verb here, 
super ant. The sailors do not conquer. Or perhaps in this example, the sailors are not victorious. They don't win. The sailors are not victorious. Quam quam, although. Pugnant, verb, although they fight. And then bene is an adverb in ordinary brackets, well. Although they fight well. So, to recap, we start by looking for the subject of a sentence, which is underlined, the verb has a box round it, and the adverbs have ordinary brackets. And before we do any of that, we identify in a sentence if there's a subordinate clause, and we split it off using a slash or, if necessary, two slashes.